The Winter Garden Ballroom was built in the late 19th century and it sits amongst Blackpool's lights and faded glamour. That's over a hundred years of dance and movement experienced in this space. Some people think this energy can be retained in the very fabric of a building. So we invited some local dancers and their friends to try and tap into this imaginary force. Thank you very much for coming. The reason why I've asked you here is I want you to experience something which dates back to around the time that this room was opened uh, and was a precursor to the now more familiar Ouija board that I'm sure many of you will have heard of. It is a little startling, but I would ask you please to embrace it and to go with it and to find it fascinating rather than frightening. Now, let me grab this. Thank you. So, everybody just look at me. I'm going to choose uh, a few of you for this. Uh, let's have you. I want you just to check the table for me, that there's nothing uh, strange about it. Feel free to lift it up and uh, look around. Chap there as well. Can you come forward, please? Again, just do the same thing there. Just have a good look. Just check there aren't any wheels. Thank you. And let's have... Yes, you, if you can stand there. One, two, three, four, and... Five. I want you to come forward. Great. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah? Sarah. Shh. Yeah, you'd be great. Thank you. All right, let me explain what I want you to do. Um, first thing I'd like is for everybody else to form a circle around me. All right? That's a wide circle, so give these guys here some space. Just form a circle right the way around me. Quick as you can, please. All right, in a moment, I'm going to ask you guys here to place your hands on the table. All right? fingers and thumbs, everything in contact on top, all right? Now, you've had a look at the table, you're happy that's just an ordinary table, and I haven't prearranged anything with you. No, no none of you are actors or studios. The same for all of you. Nothing's been prearranged with any of you, correct? All right, the rest of you. I need you to put your hands by your sides and just relax, and I want you all to take a deep breath in. And then let it out. And I want you all to look at the table. I want you to imagine, as you look at it now, I want you to get a sense of a life force, all right? An energy, a power, whatever you want to call it, that you create as you look there at the table. I want you to push that energy across the room from where you're standing into the table. Imbue it with that life force, give it that life force. This is one of a handful of places, this room, where this phenomenon can occur. But you must concentrate. And I want you to place your hands on the table as I showed you now, do that now. Place your hands on the table. Now you don't need to press, just a gentle laying of the hands there on the table, good. Now you can relax your breathing as you focus on the table. As you notice the life force in the table, it will start to move. This is strange. When it happens, you're just gonna go with it. Everybody else just focusing on the center of the table too. you take, there it goes. Whatever you do, you don't push it, you just let it move, you let it do what it wants to do. Just keep with it, just keep following it. And absolutely feel that force in the table, which is separate from you. It's nothing to do with you, and you let that move, you let it go where it wants to. If it turns, you follow it. You don't push it, you don't pull it, you don't do anything, you just follow it as it picks up speed. And all the rest of you concentrating, watching and building up that energy in that table. This table, this apparently inanimate thing bursting with life. Let's just break the circle here. I'm going to take you, I'm going to put you right here, all right? I want you to call that table as if you were calling a child. You're just going to say to it, I'm here. Just keep saying it as I'm if you were, here. As if you were calling a child. I'm here. Over and over again, I'm and here. the table will come. I'm here. Keep it going, Lindsay. I'm here. Let it find you. Think of it like a child. I'm here. Talk to it like a child. I'm here. Now over here, over here, opposite side. Stand back, take a gap. <laughs> Chris, all right, Chris, just call it, call it to you. I'm here. Call, call it. I'm here. Say, I'm here. I'm here. Call it. I'm here. Like you're talking to a child. Here, here it comes. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Just gonna let it rest. Now tell it to stop. 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 Okay? You can let go for me. Oh, God. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> let me just verify before we go any further. None of you are pushing, correct? No. no. Nobody was pushing? No. If you were, say so. Be honest. No, no. no. All right. Everybody else, now you want to all grab a table. There are some around the side here. Four people to a table. If you all want to grab one, arrange the tables in a circle. Excellent. Do you want to come and put that one here for me? 
All of you just take a moment. And all the tables in place? All right. Turn and face your tables. Have a look at the center of your table. Take a deep breath in now. Just get that life force in the table. Just see it there in the table. And out. And place your hands on the table now. OK. Keep your eyes focused on the center of the table. Just start to feel it moving through the table. When it goes, you must just follow it. It is odd, but when your table comes alive, you must just move with it and you must just follow it. Let it go wherever it wants to go. It's starting off over here, great. That will start to spread around the group. As soon as you feel it go, you must just let it go. As soon as you feel it. You might find it turning or tipping. That's great. Doesn't matter if you bump into other people. There it goes. It spreads around, getting faster. And faster. And just wait for it and start to feel it. It'll take you by surprise. That's what happens, all right? Doesn't matter if you're the last person to move. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you're the last table to go. Let them have a life of their own. You just follow them. <laughs> Let them take you where they want. The table alive between your fingers. If it falls over, just pick it up. It'll carry straight on. Excellent. Great. You're going. Just keep in contact with it. As the energy builds, and builds and takes you wherever the table wants to go. That energy builds and then suddenly disappears. And the tables will come to a stop. As soon as it stops, move away from the table. Let's move away from the table, stand back. And then give yourselves a huge round of applause. That was fantastic. Those tables were definitely possessed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way you can describe it. One minute they were dead, the next minute they were off. When Darren was doing it with like the people in the middle and we were looking at the table, it's like, oh yeah, them people can do it. You know, you know, he's just chose them out. Yeah. But then we all did it. It was phenomenal. Actually, we were just our fingers were just touching the tables and then all of a sudden it just started to move. We went, whoa. <laughs> Wherever the table went, we were just being pulled with it. Oh, I've never felt anything like it. It was, it was really <laughs> bizarre. I could feel my whole body shaking. It was, it was, it was an indescribable <laughs> feeling. I was like, oh. I used to sketch as a child, and now when I'm not performing, I paint bizarre portraits of people. And I'm creating one here for a final experiment, certainly the most difficult thing I've attempted. We went to a preview in an art gallery. It's very exciting to be here amongst a group of some of Britain's foremost young artists. I'm going to use this to generate a random member from the audience. Here's what I'm going to do. I will throw this over my shoulder. Whoever catches it, you throw it again over your shoulder. Whoever catches it that time, you throw it one more time. This gets thrown three times. Somebody get ready to catch. Here we go. Throw it again. Throw it again. Somebody pick it up. Throw it again. One more time into the audience. Did somebody catch it. You're our guy. What's your name? Steve. Steve, give me a beer. Hold that. Come through here with me. This painting has been covered throughout the whole party. No one knows what it is. Now, I've been obsessive about this. Not even our film crew know what this painting is. But you, Steve, are going to tell me what the painting is. You just won't know how you know. All right? Now, listen very carefully. All I'm going to tell you is that it's a painting of a celebrity, a famous person. It's, it's a caricature portrait that I painted myself. Now, listen very carefully. I'm not going to tell you if that person is dead or alive, not even whether they're male or female. All right? What I want you to do now is just to get a name in your head, to think of a name now. Okay, don't say what it is, but tell me if you've got one. Have you got one? Yeah. Sure? Sure. OK. Now, for the record, all right, that free choice you just made in your head was a free choice you just made then, right? You weren't asked earlier on to pre-decide on a name or write anything down or make any decisions earlier on, true? True, definitely. All right. Nobody here could know the name you're thinking of right now. You might. How would I know? You're a mind reader. Absolutely. But there's really no way I could know, is there? Seriously. No. No, okay, and genuinely there isn't. There is no way I can tell you what you're thinking of right now because it doesn't work like that, all right? But what I can do is plant an idea in your mind 
and then I should be able to see when you pick up on the idea that I'm giving you. Okay. All right? You won't be aware of it consciously. Put your hands by your sides and just go with this. All right? The name you're thinking of now is not it. I want you to change your mind and think of another name. You got one? Yeah. All right. Keep your eyes open as you do this, otherwise I can't do it. That's not it either. Change your mind. Think of someone else. Look at me. Think of someone else. Yeah. Say it in your mind over and over again. Say the name. Say it to me in your mind. Change your mind again. That's not it. Got one? Yeah. That's it. Whatever you've got in your head, that's the one we're going to go with. All right? Yeah. Now tell me so for the say. first time who it is you're thinking of, clearly. Orson Welles. You're thinking of Orson Welles. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Well, you take just a step forward. Take hold of that there. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I give you <laughs> Orson Welles. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. I was thinking of Woody Allen. Then suddenly I decided to confuse him, went for Orson Welles. And that's who it was. It was freaky. Unbelievable. Back at the House of Detention, I met a man who claimed he could beat a lie detector. After half an hour attached to it, he proved that he could. Have you ever done anything, done anything? Done anything? really, really, really wrong? Really wrong. Describe what you were like at school. Always school. Always going always going into a lot of trouble. Getting kicked out of school. school. And that was a lie? That was, a lie? That was my, my brother, brother, yeah. You can beat him. I disconnected him from the machine to see if he could beat me. This is a polygraph or lie detector. To beat it, you'd need to be able to control your body temperature, your breathing rate, your pulse. To do that, you'd need to be a perfect and congenital liar, bordering on the sociopathic. Grant, that's you. Thanks for joining us. No problem. You're a used car salesman, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, now, we've just spent about half an hour on this, and you can beat the polygraph. You're one of a few people that can do it. Well, I want to see how you fare against me. The difference, of course, between me and the machine is that machine cannot pick up on visual and auditory clues. And now that I've just said there are visual and auditory clues, you will, of course, find yourself making them. I will signal when I think you're lying using my Unitouch desktop audio generator. Which is there. Okay. So, relax, get comfy. Don't feel at all self-conscious. <laughs> and uh, I'll ask you a couple of questions I know the answer to first. What's your Christian name? Grant. Very good. And uh, where are we at the moment? We're in the detention centre. Very good indeed. All right. So you can lie or tell the truth now to these questions. Okay. Grant, have you ever done anything really wrong? Yes. Good. What's the worst thing you've done? You can tell me. When I was uh, younger, I set a car alight. You set a car alight when you were young? Yeah, no. What's the worst thing you've done? Just tell me how old you were. There's something you're thinking of now, so quite specifically. How old are you? Sure. 25. 35, no. How old were you? 20. Yeah, okay. All right, 20 years old. What did you do? I stole a car. Bollocks. What did you do? Uh, I lied to somebody. Oh, that's good. No, that's true. You, you lied to someone. And, uh, all right, and who was it? Someone close to you? Someone close to me, yes. Yeah, who was it? Family? Yes. No. Who was it? Girlfriend. Your girlfriend, okay. And where were you? Nah, where were you? Where were you? Japan. Good, okay. I believe you. All right, so look, here's what's happening. Now, you know when, when friends of yours, if you're in a pub and your mates are lying, you know when they're lying because you can feel it because you're in rapport with them, you are attuned to them. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm lining myself up with your ongoing physiological state. So here's the thing. I'm going to attach myself to the polygraph. The polygraph will now pick up on the changes in me. Okay. And because I have that attunement with you, because I'm so in line with you, my body will respond to your lies because I will actually feel you lying. Does that make sense? Okay. Can you turn me on, Grant? Okay. Grant, I'm going to ask you four times in a row what your mother's maiden name is. Okay. Each time you only think the answer, you say nothing out loud. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. You think the correct answer three times, and you think a lie once. Yeah. When you lie, is up to you. Okay. So say nothing out loud. Grant. What's your mother's maiden name?
Grant. What's your mother's maiden name? That's the lie. Was that the lie? Yes. Yeah. Is it something like, is it muk muk something? That's or muk, 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 and then a short, like a, and then a muk, a muk, 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 Well done, Grant. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. You can relax now. Okay, thank you. He was able to guess what lies I was telling, when I was telling them, and uh, he was able to guess what I was thinking, and which, when, when I was thinking a lie. It's unbelievable that can someone tell so quickly. It wasn't even one try or two tries, it was straight off in you straight away. So imagine you've come to see me and I'm a stage psychic. And I say that I'm picking up some kind of psychic vibration from somebody in the audience. And I say it's, uh, uh, it's a lady. Uh, and actually, could you, I promise I won't ask you off on stage, could you just put your hand up if you are a lady? Just so we can see how it works out in terms of numbers. So please do this on the balconies as well and right up at the top of the back. Keep your hands up as long as this continues to apply to you, all right? So let's say I'm sensing it's a lady and uh, sort of a young, youngish lady, sort of around 20, that kind of age. And, uh, and I'm sensing your name begins with... Um, an F. It's a random letter, but it'll just help narrow you down. So keep your hands up as long as this has continued to apply to you. Right now, in the dark, it can feel a bit special. I think he's talking to me. Whereas the reality is, if do keep your hands up, if we just bring the lights up for a moment, we bring the lights up, if you look around you, you should see in the nicest way, nothing special happening at all. Just a bunch of Fs sat in the dark. Could you stand up if you've got your hand up? Could you stand up? One, two, three, five, okay, so, so yeah, it's a good, right, a good number of you. Anybody on these other balconies? Yeah, hello, great. Could you stand up? We'll get a microphone to you. This is on the upper circle. The rest of you can sit down. I think I'll just talk to this lady here, but thank you so much for standing. What's your name? Faye. Faye, nice to meet you, Faye. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you? Twenty. 20. Have you got any pets? Yeah. What have you got? D don't say their names, just like dogs, cats, whatever they are, it's fine. Dogs. Dogs, what breed? Uh, staff. Staff, okay, good. You said dogs, is that two? Yeah. Did you name them both yourself? Uh, family name. Family name them, okay. All right, how long ago did they name them? Roughly, what are we talking about? Like a few years ago? Uh, about 10, 11 years 10, ago. 10, 11 years ago. Okay, what do your parents do for a living? Or at least what were they doing back then? Uh, hairdresser and electrician. Hairdresser and electrician, okay, good. Okay, the dog's male, female, one of each? Female. Okay, both female? Yeah. All right, now listen, I, you're going to tell me the name of one of the dogs, and I'm going to work out what they would have called the other dog, all right? So if, if you think of both of the names, if you think one of them is maybe a little more obvious than the other one, then give me that one so I can work out the, the more unusual one, all right? Uh, so take your time, but just give me, give me the name of one of the dogs. Ebby. Ebby? Yeah. E-B-B-Y? E-B-B-I. A E B B I. Maybe short for Ebony? Is it a black yeah. dog? Okay, all right, good. So this will be the name of the other one. All right, and it's a female? Yeah. Okay, and they name both them together. All right, just imagine you are calling this dog to you. Imagine you're calling the dog to you. All right, now as you do that, uh, just keep repeating the name in your mind again and again. And again. The lips remain sort of quite relaxed, importantly, so we know there's no sort of plosive sounds or um, like P's or B's or anything that would bring the lips together. Uh, so keep repeating the names. No, it's also at the front of the mouth, so you've got like an N or a T maybe, and I think we're starting with a S, a S sound or a Z. Oh, there you go, careful. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to say yes, that's okay, I'll uh, work it out. I appreciate the help, just takes the challenge out of it somewhat. So. <laughs> Uh, oh, there you go, back up there again. So just keep repeating the name, just shout the name, not, nothing out loud, but in your mind, just shout the name like you're screaming, screaming to this dog to come to you, right? Louder and louder until you are... Oh, no, they uh, called it Xena. <laughs> Xena with an X, like the princess... Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you very much indeed, great, take a seat. Well done, thank you. <laughs> so, Let me uh, just try something with a few of you here. Your name, sir? Frankie. Frankie, now, you are not a stooge, you're not an actor, we haven't set anything up, I haven't asked you to help me out here in a bad way, no? That's correct, yeah. Correct, come stand here for me. This is so simple, I just want you to think of something. Now, this can be anything, it could be like a, a name or a, a, a place or just a random word, doesn't matter, but get something very clearly in your mind. Okay. All right? Yeah. Okay? And when you've got something, Frankie, I'd also like you to change your mind a few times till you are happy that you settle on something that I could not possibly know. Have you got something? Yes. Great, okay, we'll work with that. Now what you do is you just visualise that thing. Just look out there for me, just look at a, maybe a spot up there on the ceiling. Just start to sort of bring it in like this, sort of enlarging it a little bit. Okay, and as you do that, there's something musical, is that right? Yes. Yes. Bring it in here like that. Just bigger and bigger. What is this, a violin or something? It's like a violin? Along those lines. Guitar? Yes. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Not bad. 
right, all right. Uh, thank you. Sir, what's your name? Stefan. Ste Stefan comes down here. Thank you. Same name as other actor. All right, uh, can you take your glasses off on me. Can you see me right without those? Oh, just about. All right, okay, same thing. So again, you're thinking of anything you like. Name, place, random word, change your mind again and again and again. Settle on something that you can visualize in some way. Have you got something? Yeah. Maybe you think guitar was a little easy, looks like he plays the guitar, so <laughs> make it a difficult one if you want, all right? Just come up with something. Let me get up my pad and can I? Pad man, thank you very much. All right. Just relax for me. I'm going to ask you to think of letters in the word and that kind of thing. So let's just start with a letter somewhere in the middle of this word that you're thinking of at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Over and shh. Sorry, one second. Okay, I might not be able to do this. Is that a D? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> right. Let's go for another one nearer the, uh, maybe nearer the end. Got one? Yeah. That's an A, yes? Yeah. It's the name of something, isn't it? Because you're not able to visualize this too easily. This may be the name of a place or something like that. Just search yourself over and over again. Don't give anything away. Just search yourself, right, thank you. All right, so there's a plosive sound at the beginning. Could be like a B or a P or a B, thank you. Something like that. Uh, just repeating it over and over. And oh God, did you? The word was? Broadstairs. Broadstairs. You go and put your glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see otherwise, I'm blind. Broadstairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. As you were doing that, be honest, all right? Don't just make me look good. As you were doing that, did you have the word grace in your mind? You're amazing. Did you have grace? Oh, you're did amazing. you have grace? Like, that's your what? It's my girlfriend, yeah. Did you have that in your mind? Yeah, you, the first, you... that was the first thing that came in. And then you changed it to grace. Yeah, well, thank you so much. You're thank fantastic you. at this. You're great. It's fantastic. Like, you didn't even know that. It was amazing. It was special. ESP or whatever, psychic, the devil possession, I don't know. But, it, you know, I don't, I don't know how he did it. I mean, he what, came into the pub like 10 minutes ten before minutes and he pretty much knows the intimate details of your life. You've got to get Darren Brown at least once in your life, basically. <laughs> in America's New York, I use my award-winning powers to plant a word in the slightly smaller American brain without anybody knowing how. Guys, you're free for a couple of minutes. Do you want to come and do this? Sure. It's a kind of a mind-reading uh, okay. sort of experiment. Um, I need you to call somebody that you know. Okay. All right. Uh, does your cell phone have a, a speaker phone? Mm -hmm. It does? Yes. Excellent. Good. Do you want to get someone on? Is there someone you can call you think I'll be in? Right. What's this person's name? Joe. Okay. Well, if Joe isn't in, we can try someone else. Yeah. Is that on speaker at the moment? Yeah. Great. Cool. Actually, if you want to hold it, if you hold it in your hand like that, then we'll both be able to hear it. And then Mike will be able to pick it up. Joe? Yeah. Okay, just stay on the line and talk to me, okay? All right. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Uh, my name's Darren Brown. I'm a, I'm a kind of English psychological illusionist, if that makes any sense. And I want to try a, a kind of a mind-reading experiment with you, all right? All right. I need to ask you a few questions, Joe. I need to know a few things about you. Please be honest. How old are you, Joe? I'm 18. 18, fantastic. <coughs> and uh, do, are you a student? Do you work or...? I'm a student. Um, what, what do you study? What, what do you, are you at school or what, what do you major in? I actually go to culinary school. Culinary school? Thank you. That's really interesting. Great. All right, listen, so I'm going to write something down here. I'm not going to show uh, Jessica or any of these guys what it is. Um, I'm going to ask you to be doing three things in a moment, all right? Joe, let me just explain. You're going to be uh, writing a word in your mind on like a big chalkboard. Uh, you're going to be saying the word to yourself over and over again. And then you're also going to try and do the whole thing without really thinking about it, right? So that's three different kind of cogs that are going to be going round in your mind at the same time, all right? But let me just, uh, let me just write something here first. Okay. Okay, cool. Joe, I need you to imagine that you are, uh, you know, six years old back in elementary school, all right? And imagine you're picking up a piece of chalk. Okay. Then you're going to start writing a word very large and clear on this chalkboard, and then just tell me when you're done. You're happy that was a, a free choice of word, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. See, I've written something here, and you won't be able to see what I've written, but hopefully you'll be able to tell by Jessica's reaction as to whether it's at all close. What was the word that you wrote? Bicycle. Bicycle. 
tricycle! Not bad! Tricycle, yeah? That was one wheel out, tricycle! <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thanks for your help. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> I thought he was going to be completely wrong and it'd be like a complete sham, but then like he got tricycle. I'm pretty amazed, actually. I think he's psychic. Like, there's no other explanation for it. Because how else would he go with? <laughs> A good communicator affects our physiology. The power of voice can entrance us, even induce or remove pain. I came to the old operating theatre at London Bridge. You're all medical students? Yeah. yeah. Have you been here before? It is a remarkable place. This is where they used to perform amputation. Amputation. Imagine yourself. Imagine delirious, yourself. Delirious. Delirious. With fear. With fear. With fear. There's no anaesthetic. Just hold you down. Hold you down. Hold you down. And hope that you'd just pass out before they'd finished. So I want to try something with all of you. And while it may be a bit disturbing, I can absolutely guarantee your safety. If you don't want to do this, that's absolutely fine. You can say so. But if you do, once you're in, you're in. And there's no going back, all right? Are you all happy to do this? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? No. You don't want to do it? No. Sure? Yeah. Absolutely fine. I'm going to make your way back out there. So let's begin. It's very easy to get an idea in somebody's head. Do you study dentistry as part of the course? No. No? The whole area of toothache is an interesting one. But often what happens is the nerves at the actual base of the tooth, like right, you know, right in there, right where the base of the tooth would be, go bad, right in there. You must have had really bad toothache. The first sort of tingling feeling that you get, I mean, what's it like? How do you describe this sort of a toothache pain? Constant pain. Yeah? yeah. You're feeling that now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. What's that like? Sharp down straight across. Mm -hmm. You're genuinely feeling that now? I'm genuinely feeling it. Mm -hmm. Straight down. Sometimes it's the sort of thing that can spread. You're getting it in your gums or is it in the teeth yeah, itself? It's also everywhere. Yeah. Down your jaw. Right down your jaw. Yeah. And when it gets worse, and it gets worse. And suddenly it's gone. And gone. And you don't feel anything at all. It's like it's anaesthetized. You feel nothing. Nothing at all. Like in the back of your hand there. It's like a blueness. It's like a blueness in the hand. No, nothing. <laughs> Try pinching it. What's it like? Nothing clammy and not responsive at all. Imagine you can probably feel your wrist anyway, you can feel your arm. Yeah. You really not feel that? Seriously. Would you be happy to, you know, bash that or twist it really hard or stick something through it? Yeah. Would you be happy to stick a needle through it? Uh, yeah. Would you be happy to do that now? If I gave you a needle? Yeah. Just to show us that really is dead. You'd be happy? Yeah. <laughs> These are sterilised hypodermic needles. You want to hold that in that hand. You really can't feel that, can you? Seriously. Absolutely dead. It's just like a piece of dead meat on the table. It's like sticking a needle through a piece of dead meat. Go and just push it through. You should right through and out the other side. Right through. Oh my. Uh, you can't feel a thing, can you? No. How does it make you feel? Weird. That is... Weird. Just a dead hand. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. And you're not bleeding? You're completely happy with that? Completely happy with that. You pull it back out, gently. No blood. No bleeding. Now the feeling is going to come back in your hand now. There'll be no pain. You find you can start moving your fingers now and moving your hand. I saw 
saw the needle there and then it just came back out the other side and thinking, now this really should be hurting, but just nothing at all. When you took the needle out, you just couldn't see anywhere that the needle had been. I was really surprised. I thought, you know, there'd be some blood at least. It was an amazing experience. Impressed. Very, very impressed. But something about which there's no doubt is that Joe does have a whole lot of ambition. Tonight he's invited me along to what's considered the next step up any psychic medium's career ladder. A sellout show. Thank you. Hello. And this is the first psychic show I've ever been to. And it's a bit of a surprise. Given the show is all about contacting the dead, I was expecting a somber audience. But this lot, 250 people paying £10 each, are anticipating a bit of entertainment. <laughs> Time for Joe to meet his public. You know, I can actually look into your life like a book and open it up and open a page and have a look at your secrets. I'm going to be contacting the alleged spirit world. Is everyone up for that? Yeah. For the next two hours, Joe's taking this willing crowd into his world. I've got two people coming through. Where am I? Where are we? Two people? He's saying he's got his marbles back. Thank God. And they love him. For them, Joe's worth the price on the ticket as he delivers hit. There was a rat in his house. Thank you. <laughs> After you hit. Oh, if he's like, would be 38 or. 38. 38, thank you very much. But interspersed with the showmanship are stories of real tragedy. There's been a lot of heartache in this room. But the main person is the person that's being crushed, OK? He needs to let you know is that he's fine. In the vehicle... The many stories of suicides and violent deaths bring home the intimate level at which these people are allowing Joe to tread. He carries a real responsibility as he involves himself in their memories. OK, you've got two suicides. Yeah, your son was murdered. Uh, my first husband committed suicide as well. OK, does one of them know Gary? OK, is that he passed through a suicide. She's mentioning cocaine, she's mentioning drugs. Is that he would have hung himself, this person? It makes me feel sad and uncomfortable. And I wonder what's more important. Just let you know, is that they're OK? Whether Joe's actually psychic or whether he brings comfort. OK, OK, I'm, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave Michelle with you. She's absolutely fine. She's happy. Oh, yeah. OK, thanks for having got that. OK, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh... I thought he was really good, really accurate. I thought he was great. Yeah, he, he was, was really, really good. good. Yeah, he is very good. Yeah. Whatever you try to do, you try to, with me, is try to keep the audience uplifted because you've got a lot of people mm. grieved in the audience and different things. It'll just be my natural way of work and, you know, sometimes serious, sometimes a little bit uplifting and then, you know, changing from time to time. Where would you imagine yourself in five, five years' time? What would you love to be doing with this? I would like to be doing shows in front of, say, two and three thousand people because I feel I make a lot stronger connections than other people that are performing yeah. out there now. But I am a bit surprised to discover that some of the people Joe read for tonight have had readings with him before, albeit some time ago. He's, he's actually given me the same reading um, last year, about 12 months ago. I have, I have had a reading off him before, but it was a long time ago. We've been to an open circle before um, with Adam. You've seen him before privately, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And she has a different... Wow. Hands. And everything that he says is always spot on. Spot on. Joe says that people are going to follow him regularly if they like psychic performances and will have seen more than one show. Do another one because I'm waiting to go OK, ready, one, two. Tonight's audience certainly believe Joe was communicating with the dead. I'd love it to be true as well, but I've got my doubts.